It's been a minute since I did a driving tour video, and today I wanna to talk about one of the questions that everybody seems to have on their mind, which is, are we on the brink of a housing market collapse? And there's a lot of folks out there that have reason to be concerned, and I'm one of them. Now, as the boots on the ground operator of a high performance real estate team, I obviously have a vested interest in helping folks buy and sell homes. But that being said, the last thing that I ever want anybody to do is anything that is not right for them. And so right now I'm working with some sellers and they, without giving too much information about them away, <coughs> but they have two properties that are under contract to sell within the next week. And they are consolidating. They are moving in together. They are going to max out the utility of their next home. They're going to max out the enjoyment of South Florida living to the fullest. But there are some real concerns that they have in terms of the affordability of housing in terms of what their new taxes are going to be. And they had sticker shock when I told them the reality of what taxes on their new property are. Now, they also got to learn that because they have uh, homesteaded their previous property and they are protected under the Save Our Homes assessment uh, privilege that exists in Florida, that they've got portability of their homestead. And so their tax burden is nowhere near as bad as what they thought it would be at first, but it's still a little bit more expensive than what they are currently paying on both properties. But if you're not familiar with portability of your homestead <coughs> assessed value, then please reach out so I can bring you up to speed. Chances are, if you bought your home uh, you know, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, or even five years ago, you have a tax benefit that can be applied to your new property taxes. But that's gonna be on a case-by-case -case basis. It's going to uh, be different for everyone. And if you're a first-time buyer, then you're not going to have that privilege. But chances are in the future you will and that will be a benefit to you especially if home values continue to skyrocket at the rate they are in the hyper local markets in which i serve and do business but my market is probably not the same as yours and each market is going to trade independently of each other. So what's happening in my market is very unlikely what's happening in your market. But if you want to know exactly what's going on in your market, then please reach out because we will connect you with someone who absolutely understands the granularity of the market wherever you're thinking about buying or selling and can advocate and negotiate for you the right way. Because ain't nobody overpaying on my watch. And ain't nobody not finding the one buyer on planet Earth willing to pay more than anybody else for their home if they're thinking about selling. But let's talk about what's happening right now because I've talked a lot in the past. Look at this home over to my left. I hope you can see it. We're gonna drive past it here. We, maybe we won't, I don't know. But I have to pay attention to the road. And although there's nobody on the road, <laughs> um, I still have to pay attention to the road because ain't nobody not going to uh, get in big trouble if I run them over, uh, myself specifically. <laughs> uh, Johnny Law won't like it if I run somebody over because I'm distracted driving, but I know the uh, commenters will uh, chastise me for my um, not paying attention to the road, but nonetheless, let's get back into it. So right now, fears over access to credit have hit their highest level in more than a decade. Hmm. 
That's quite interesting. I've been talking about that for over a year. When they started quantitative tightening, I predicted the, the liquidity crisis that will absolutely 100% have to happen. And what's happened since I made that video? Every single thing I predicted in that video has come true. And every single thing that I predicted in that video that has not come true yet to its fullest extent will because it's predictable. And it's not because I'm so smart, it's because I've got some experience. In my last career, in a former life, I was a stockbroker and I did that for 20 years. So for 20 years, I got to see everything that happened in every market and it was a 24 hour a day news cycle. So I needed to be plugged in to what's happening in every international market, in every economy globally, and every single crisis that happened, it was instantly priced in to the markets in which I was trading. Now, the great thing about the stock market, in my opinion, is that it prices in bad news and good news in real time. The housing market does not do that. The housing market is lagging. And if you rely on housing data that is published by most associations that are out there, it's going to be old. It's going to be at least a month old. And actually that's not true. It will be over a month old. Now, I often will do content which talks about what's happening in real time because I pay a fortune to have access to what is happening in real time. So I know exactly what's happening up until yesterday, every day, all the time in each market that I serve and support. So if you ever want to know with specificity exactly what's happening in any market in the South Florida uh, region, then please reach out because I will absolutely make sure you know exactly what's happening. And the market's changing. The market has changed tremendously over the last quarter and over the last year. And while home prices continue to appreciate in some markets, there are other markets where they are declining. And if you watched my last video, you could see that the beginning of this month so far has been no bueno in terms of home prices. They are declining in many places, not all. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that mortgage interest rates are so high. Because mortgage interest rates are so high, there is a short supply of new listings. Up until there's not, because there are lots of folks that are starting to feel financial pain and they are going to get liquid by selling the one thing that has the most equity. And I've said this in the past, I'll continue to say it again. Equity is not real until it's realized. So although many people in Florida, many homeowners in Florida are sitting on a metric shit ton of equity, it's not real until it's in your bank account, until you've sold your home, until you've cashed in. Until that happens, it's funny money and it's not real. And it only takes one property in your subdivision to be a low fire sale because the pain point of that seller is so extreme that they've had to do whatever they've had to do. And whether that's foreclosure or short sale or I don't know what, but if you get a low priced sale in your market, well then that is going to impact your home's value materially. And if there's enough of them, I can promise you that metric shit ton of equity that you think you have, poof, it's gone. And that's the truth. Now, we're in an election cycle. Everyone knows that there's a lot of positioning that's happening. There's a lot of false information being advertised, in my opinion. There's a lot of economic data that I think is being manipulated and window dressed to look a certain way in order for certain 
politicians to be propped up and look better, but I don't believe most of the data that I see because most of the data that I see is calculated in a way that is no longer relevant. So long way of getting to, don't believe the hype. Um, but no, no politician is ever gonna go out there and tell you the truth. No politician is ever gonna go out there and scare you. They have no interest in doing that. In fact, they're going to tell you what you want to hear because the last thing that they ever wanna do is spook you. They don't want to panic the consumer, the public, the market, because if they spook the consumer, then the consumer does not spend. And we are in a consumer-driven economy. If the consumer does not trust the system, if they do not trust the institutions, if they do not trust the banks or the government, well, then the system fails. And it's happened before. It's not, and it will happen again, period. But who do we have out there in the news today? Jamie Dimon, JP Morgan Chase. He's out there saying, and this is a little bit interesting to me, it is a tell, but he's out there saying that while the economy is doing well, it would be a huge mistake to believe that it will be sustainable for years. Well, thanks for the news flash, Jamie. You're not telling me anything I didn't already know. And I suspect he's not saying anything that you don't already know. But what he did not say, but is factually true, is he is the recipient of all of the regional bank failures. He is the welcome recipient of those failures because he is typically the one who is getting those banks. He's acquiring those banks. Those banks are now going to be under his balance sheet, which means it's a dip for him. It's addition by subtraction. And that is what I suspect they want. That is what I suspect they are pushing for. And who is they? I don't know. I'm not them. I couldn't tell you. But I do know the market is changing. And <coughs> while there are many people that are afraid of the uncertainty of the future, what I do know is this. If you are thinking about buying or selling a home, and it's right for you, and you can afford it, then there is nothing to fear. If you are out there and you are on the fringe of being able to afford um, a property or really anything, and you're on the margin of thinking whether it will make sense for you or it's right for you, or you're sacrificing in other areas of your life to make your quote unquote dream a reality, and anybody is pressuring you to do that, don't do it. Don't do it. If it's not right for you, it's not right for you. And funny enough, um, the same people that I was talking about at the beginning of this video who are out there and they must buy a property. When we went to look at properties yesterday and normally the homes that I showcase and the markets that I showcase are quite affluent areas. They're very expensive homes. So I've seen your comments and I get a lot of people who request for me to showcase uh, lower price points. Well, the market that we're shopping in is mid mid tier um, at least for my market so we're talking about homes that are between five and six hundred thousand <coughs> which again are not cheap but that's the market that we're shopping in that price point single family homes <coughs> the home that we found and there's not a lot of them checked eight out of ten boxes and yet I could tell it was not a strong hell yes from both of them so what did I do? I said, guys, I'm not writing up a contract on this property because I don't believe both of you think this is 100% yes. And they couldn't believe it. They said, we've never met a realtor who would tell us not to buy a home when 
we probably would have written a contract on it if you told us to. And I said, I'm never going to do that. I'll talk you out of a home before I ever talk. I'll never, in fact, I have a very strict no sales pressure policy. Nobody on my team ever will ever lean in with sales pressure because if they do, they will be fired immediately. There's not a lot of rules. That's the only one. Never apply sales pressure. My job is to provide the best information so that you can make the best decisions for yourself, for your family, and for your financial bottom line. Now, to conclude that story, we went and looked at another home today. It was not right for them. And now they think the eight out of 10 is more like a 10 out of 10. And yet to be determined, I don't know, but that home is great. If it's not 100% hell yes, then it's 100% hell no. And anyone who is advising you differently, you should run from. Now, I hope you found this content valuable. And if you did, please subscribe to the channel, give it a thumbs up, share it with a friend, check me out on Twitter where I can never be censored, follow me on Patreon where I go off and check out my next video because I suspect you will love it a lot. And until next time, peace.